All right. I finally capitulated. I said I wasn't going to draft best ball teams in January, but I'll sneak one in in February. Actually, we might sneak two in because this is the return of best ball breakfast. We'll be drafting big board drafts on underdog fantasy. I'm Peter Overzet. Let's roll. My slow draft rooms are so much different than my streamed drafts. Does no one realize Underdog's half-point PPR? Idiots! Damn, bro. You know ball. Hope you guys packed your bags. I packed my bags. No, I mean, I, I literally packed my bags. She kicked me. Dude, Star Method's legit. Only way to max out every contest in a plus EV way. Week 17, you still gotta get there, bro. We have a finite season. We only have so much samples. Is it negative EV to stream all your drafts? We just don't know. All right. Good mornings. Look at the chat. Absolutely fired up. GMs, GMs, GMs. This is our year. Yes, we're not all just going to lose. Like Davis Maddock famously said, no, this is our year. This is our year that we're going to win. What is up, Mr. Mister? What's up, GA, Justin, Paul, JGFC, excited for opening day. I, I don't, I get, I mean, this is my opening day, but I mean, this is hardly uh, opening day. I'm showing up and, you know, pitchers and catchers have reported, uh, what, uh, a month ago? Uh, I, I heard Sacrilegious on uh, Pat's pod the other day say he's like 60 drafts deep. Um, I remain pure. This is legitimately my first draft. Didn't sneak any in, no slow drafts, no quick one, you know, to get me prepped. No, we are raw dogging it today. What is up, Achievers Carolina? Copper, the value hounds. Do we kick off 2024 with an ah, woo? There we go. There we go. Uh, GM, Alexa, return of the Mac. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, B. Kurt, curious if you could push this back an hour. I'm much more in the mood for brunch. Well, guess what? Um, you know, this this best ball breakfast stream, I guess we need to figure out at what point does it stop uh, being breakfast and at what point does it become brunch? Like what time? Is that at noon? Is it still breakfast at 11? We'll, we'll have to figure that out. Um, because last year I did the um, best ball breakfast on Wednesdays with Pat and Sean. Sometimes that spilled uh, well into the, the noon hour. So, you know, best ball breakfast is no stranger to encroaching upon brunch. Um, what's up, Paul? What is up, Brian? Uh, J Mike, highlight from my time away. J Mike always giving me uh the prompts here to talk about how I've been. Uh yeah, I had a great, I had a great week last week. Uh fantasy life was off for the week as well. Um, we're done with XM for the year. So I decided, you know what? If fantasy life's taking the week off, no newsletters, no articles, no XM, I'm like, I I'm just gonna use this as an opportunity to power down. Um I know some of these sickos can just blast forward. Um, they don't need to take a break. I wanted to take a break. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about what uh, I want my content to look like this summer, some things I want to work on. I've actually been talking to the production team about some projects that I got up my sleeve, but I needed some time to uh, to kind of decompress and think about it, but we'll, we'll ease back in here. But to answer your question, Jay Mike, uh, I did multiple things last week with my free time. Um, got to spend a lot of time with April. Uh, we went to the aquarium, uh, over the weekend, took her to the gym a couple times, her gym, it's a kid's gym, did that, uh, got some walks in. Um, I went and got a DEXA scan, which I wrote about in my newsletter, the PO box newsletter. I have a link down below free newsletter every Friday, decided I wanted to figure out what my body composition was. Uh, so that was an interesting experience. Um, I got lunch with a couple of friends. Like I, I never do that. Just like a long two, two and a half hour lunch with some friends I hadn't seen in a while. So that was great. Um, so yeah, it was, a uh, it was a lot of time getting to do, um, things that I don't normally have time for. Uh, I got set up on a new workout program. So I now have my, my splits and my days ready to go. Just lots of that kind of stuff. Housekeeping, uh, I guess like the quintessential definition of a staycation, um, no pina coladas, um, did do lots of reading though. We do got the book club, which is in conjunction with the PO box newsletter, uh, finished a couple books, uh, chain gang, all stars. I know lots of you guys enjoyed reading that one, which by the way, um, I've been writing about the newsletter or the book club in the newsletter. We also have a channel in the deposit kingdom, uh, as well. We have a book club channel where lots of people were talking about the book. I also, uh, last night wrapped up the Billy Walters biography. 
Um, Billy Walters regarded as one of the greatest sports bettors of all time. Wild, wild book. Um, I actually think Brian and I are going to talk about it a little bit on Lulz on Thursday. I think Brian got the cliff notes uh, from Billy Walters' recent appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast. So yeah, that was a, a quick summary of my time off, J. Mike. We also got some fresh digs around here, uh, updated our best ball breakfast uh, overlays, background, all of that good stuff. Actually, I think I forgot to put my solo frame on. Ooh, see? Look at that. I'm already, uh, it's going to take me a little bit to get back into streaming shape here. Um, I think we need to pour some coffee here first. We got to pour some coffee. That'll get us centered and get us back on the right track. Um, let's do it. The inaugural 2024 Best Ball Breakfast Coffee Pour. Everyone, please be quiet. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. I give it like a 7.3 out of 10. Hmm. So have I figured out if it's uh minus EV to stream all your drafts? No, I, I think uh I think it ended up being a, a pretty positive uh experience on the whole. Uh we are pouring coffee today. I know I did tea on a previous uh portfolio review show. That was because I had a sore throat when I came back from uh my trip to to Arizona here. Um thank you. Welcome back. I'm um, catching up on the chat. You guys are uh, are firing here. Um, do, do, do. What's up, Willis? Uh, yeah, Willis referencing uh, Best Ball After Dark have been doing those. Those are for YouTube members. So if you guys are Best Ball Value Hounds on the channel, you get access to those. Um, I do those every Saturday night, various guests around the industry. Uh, just coincidentally, my past two guests have been from the world of fantasy golf space. So we had, uh, Jeff Feinberg from the Mayo media network, uh, last weekend. And then I had Rick Gaiman, AKA Rick run good on Saturday night. Um, we didn't talk about golf the entire time. If you're just a fantasy bro, talked about content, uh, drama in the fantasy space, uh, on Twitter with Jeff, all kinds of fun conversations. So if you guys are YouTube members, you get access to that best ball value hounds. And I know some people like the audio version. So once you're a best ball value hound, you get access to the best ball breakfast channel in the discord. I've been posting the audio for those shows as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a way to set up a premium podcast feed that syncs with the YouTube membership, but you can easily download that to your podcast app of choice. So if you'd like to listen to those interviews on the go, that is an option here. Um, what did we learn from the best ball playoffs this year? I learned that when I got really bored of drafting Jawan Jennings, I should have continued to draft Jawan Jennings. That was my big takeaway here. Um, ben uh, Havard here, cheers to Drake May season. Um, I'm going to put all my cards on the table and let you guys know. I mean, when I say that I haven't been thinking about, you know, 2024 best ball strategy rookies, I'm not bullshitting. I, I am coming in extremely blind, extremely blind. I did upload uh, Karain's leg up rankings into underdog. So I had some framework of drafting today, but you guys are going to be schooling me. You're going to get to watch me uh, learn about this draft class, learn about 2024 drafting metas in real time, because uh, I have not been cheating. I have not been doing any open book tests. We are going to learn on the fly for better or worse. Uh, that's just how it is going to be. Hmm. What is up, Jonathan? Uh, have I done any golf best ball? I have not. Although one of the things doing the show with Rick, he has free rankings over at Rick run good, uh, for underdog, uh, best ball drafts. So I think I might have to hop in and do a few with his ranks there. Indeed. I, I would never lie. You know, people accuse you of clickbait. I mean, I would not be able to live with myself if I put on the thumbnail first draft and it was not my first draft. I have not done a four hour rookie pod. Um, it took me, it took me five nights to watch killers of the flower moon, uh, with Lauren. Like we were breaking it up into 45 minute chunks, which is about as much TV as, as we can watch at night before we get tired and go to bed because we're old people. Uh, imagine if I told my wife, I'm like, you know what, honey, I got just the thing for us to consume over the course of these next six days. No, no, no. We're not going to do Oppenheimer. No, no, we're going to pull up Spike Week, Leg Up, Collaboration, Pat Corain and Eric Beinfor talking about rookies for four hours. Babe, 
sit back, relax. I'll get the popcorn. Yeah, I don't think that would have gone too well. Can I name five rookies not counting QBs? I think I can. I think I can just because mainly from absorbing stuff from Twitter discourse. Uh, I know Troy Franklin because the 33rd team comped him to Tyquan Thornton. Um, I know Blake Corum because everyone says he's way overvalued. Um, I believe what? Uh, Frank Gore has a grandson in the league. Does that count as one? Um, I obviously know the uh, the big prospects. Marvin Harrison Jr., who's not going to go to the combine. Breaking news. Isn't going to test neighbors from LSU who everyone's saying he's actually a little bit closer to Marvin Harrison than the market's giving credit for. Uh, that's one. Uh, Romeo Adunze, I know him because of Ben Gretsch. Uh, Brock Bowers, because I saw a photo of him next to Rob Gronkowski where he looked like uh, an accountant. Am I impressing you guys yet? Um, JJ McCarthy, because you guys were talking about him in the ship chasing discord that he's screaming up draft boards. And some people are in on him, but Pat Corain's out on him. Are you not impressed? Maybe I'm lying. Maybe I know more than I let on. Hmm. All right. Um, let's see here. Um, I believe the plan here is to do a best ball draft. I believe that's the plan. So uh, I say I say we hop in. I do have some new overlays and stuff here. So I'm going to have to... Uh, to get the lay of the land. Uh, so bear with me as I do some maneuvering here. Um, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. Boom. Look at that. And then uh, going forward, once I get uh, get a little better with this, I will tip people off in the Discord if you guys are best ball value hounds when I hop in. But uh, we are not up to that point where we can multitask. But we are in. We are in the draft right now and ready to rock. Who do we got? Allen, Flip Flop Life, Jay Strez. We got Biff Tannen, Mr. D's, House Always Wins, TM Longacre, of course. Of course, TM Longacre, who famously finished top 10 in Best Ball Mania this year. Copper Prices, one second in JW. It's a full goddamn badge brigade. We got the Influencer 105, and we're ready to rock. Big board draft number one, loading. Do you have FOMO from missing out on 20th round Ray Davis? I would have to know who Ray Davis was to have fear of missing out on him. It's really hard to have fear of missing out on someone you don't know who they are. Ray Davis sounds like a fabulous jazz musician. Hmm. Copper was waiting for his Discord ping. You found a way to get in regardless. I hear I hear we like to go zero RB in these early drafts. Is that true? Um, wow. I'm going to get Jamar Chase. That seems like a great pick. I've heard, is it true? There's. Do I need to be aware of the wide receiver avalanches? I do love me some Brees Hall, but I've been told I need to be aware of wide receiver avalanches. The piss will be flowing, especially in this room. We're going to grab Jamar Chase. Our first pick of 2024. It's February 26th, and I have selected Jamar Chase. I have 100% exposure to Jamar Chase. Imagine not having 100% expe uh, exposure to the top dog on the Cincinnati Bengals. The team did uh, officially apply the franchise tag to T. Higgins today. So he will be playing on a one-year, fully guaranteed $21.8 million contract. Some people think there's still maybe a small chance he could get traded, get one of those uh, tag-and-trade deals like A.J. Brown and Tyreek Hill got. Definitely kind of sucks for T. Higgins, but playing on a one-year, fully guaranteed contract for $21.8 million, and I think if they just run it back again next year, because they could double-tag him, I think next year it would be, what, like a $25 million? I mean, I know he wants a long-term contract, but playing football for $21 million, that doesn't sound too bad. Mm. Yeah, Mr. Mister, so last year, I believe you were, were you the, in the drafts, the second most drafts with me? 
I know uh, Patrick Donovan on his great site, uh, Best Ball Mania database, had a tool where you could look up your draft buddies. Uh, Spags was my number one buddy because we drafted so many teams on Splash Play together uh, or in the same room. And I believe you were second, Mr. Mister. And then Mr. Mister went on to finish. Uh, what did you finish? Remind me. Was it fifth, sixth, seventh? I don't mean to shortchange you. I know you were in third for a little while and then you slipped down. Yeah, JGFC was also up there with me. JGFC, how does it make it make you feel that when I see your name, the, the first thing I think of is Daenerys Prince? For some reason, that's what I associate your name with the most. I mean, congrats on the personal brand. All right, we're about to pick in the second. Pat Corain trying to get me to draft Josh Allen right here. Get the hell out of here, Pat. Get the hell out. Look at this. The age-old, this is why I love Corain, because he has Brandon Ayuk just one tick ahead. Just one tick ahead. Um, I think nothing would make me feel more alive on this Monday than reigniting the Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel culture wars. Look at this. 20.7 ADP to 23.8. Davis Maddock has lost the culture war. Davis Maddock is off snowmobiling, skiing in undisclosed locations of the Pacific Northwest, and I am out here boosting Brandon Ayuk's ADP. Further cementing Ayuk as the clear winner in the Ayuk versus Debo Samuel culture wars. Davis is getting outworked. Hmm. My bad, Mike. Thank you for this. I'm still uh I'm still getting uh my bearings there. There we go. Sorry. You should now be able to see all 12 draft slots. I'm from the one five for the audio listeners. God, am I am I in just peak form? Only 16 minutes in. For the audio listeners, we have started Jamar Chase and Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> Davis would, would take Ayuk because he's a slave to ADP, though. If you guys missed that, uh, Brian Hooper, my co-host on, uh, co on Lulz, has been posting some data on how often people deviated from ADP as far as 150 maxers in Best Ball Mania uh, last year. And Davis was just like the knit of all nits. Even myself, who's a bit of a slave to ADP, Davis even blew me out of the water. All right, so we're about to pick in the third round. Michael Pittman goes. I mean, I'm happy to take Jalen Waddle here. Um, this is why I like having Pat's ranks in here. So Adam's at an ADP of 22. Um, he's the faller here. But yeah, give me uh, give me Jalen Waddle. So we've started Jamar Chase, Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddle. Why did I wait so long to do these drafts, guys? I feel alive right now. Jamar Chase, Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddle. This is what living is like. I need more coffee. Do you know what another strategic shift I made? So what used to happen to me with these Monday morning shows is I would get up early and I would have my coffee. And then I would realize right before the show started that I had no coffee left in my carafe. And I had to run upstairs, make a quick batch of content coffee. Coffee that I didn't need or necessarily want, but I knew I had to give the people a pour. But we're learning. We're evolving. I said, I'm not having any coffee this morning until the show. You know, so I was up at like 6.45, 7. I have not had a sip of coffee until just now. This is, I, I am remaining so pure for you guys. First draft for you guys. First sip of coffee on a Monday morning for you guys. The things I do for the chat. The fact that we do have 225 people watching live on a Monday morning right now uh, to watch me do a zero RB team 19 months out from the season starting, it truly is incredible. Thank you guys for hanging out. And if you are new here, smash the subscribe button, turn on the notification button. We will be here every Monday morning for Best Ball Breakfast, 10 a.m. Eastern. Who knows? Maybe we do so many drafts that it devolves into Best Ball Brunch. Yeah, I need to actually look at the board because all I'm doing, so Malik Neighbors is going pick 31. We got Marvin Harrison Jr. going pick 21. 
What is neighbors ADP? Is that right at his ADP? Neighbors is at 34.3. Wow. Wow. Back in my day, do you guys remember? Can we do the good old days? Do you remember the good old days when we could get goddamn Garrett Wilson in the 12th round? They let us get Garrett Wilson in the 12th round. They used to let you get Amon Ross St. Brown in the 17th round. Even Jamar Chase. Generational prospect. We got him in the fifth or sixth round. And now you got to take Malik Neighbors at pick 31. Unreal. Unreal. Looking at some other interesting starts here. You, It, it is interesting looking at like consensus industry ranks and stuff. And most people will have Kyron like what? 1-7, one, 1-8. One, we got a piss boy room here. So, though he, so he goes uh, pick 14. I do like seeing uh, Jameer Gibbs, Devon Achan going ahead of him. Man, I think I have a little sticker shock on that Rashi Rice price. Is that his ADP? Is Rashi Rice's ADP 15? No. Okay. I mean, 21.7, but still, that is pretty rich. That is pretty rich. Mm. All right. What are we going to do here at 4-8? Uh, Travis Etienne goes. Uh, James Cook, Amari Cooper, uh, Mark Andrews sitting here. Pat just cannot quit Mark Andrews. I do not think I'm taking a running back. Do I want to take Amari and keep the good times rolling? Uh, man. See, this is, you know what? I, no, I got to put my money where my mouth is. I got to put my, I got to have a goddamn player take early. I need a player take. Here's my take. Trey McBride is still undervalued. I'm taking Trey McBride ahead of ADP. That was one of my snap takes when the initial big board ADP ranks came out. And I know he was even cheaper. Do not type in the chat right now. I got Trey McBride at pick 96. Do not type it in the chat. I do not want to see it. This is my first draft. Let me just have one ounce of feeling like I got a deal on a player. I think Trey McBride should be what? Like a late third, early fourth. So I'm getting like seven picks of value, but still. Trey McBride is undervalued. <sighs> yeah, this, this would be a great bit if I just <laughs> pretended this was the week 17 uh, for 2023 and just stacked it up accordingly. Beast Burf, I said, do not tell me where you got Trey McBride. I said, let me have some fun saying he's undervalued. I do love Trey McBride, though. Total beast. If if someone wanted to take Trey McBride right after Sam Laporta, right around Trey McBride, or, or right around Sam Laporta, I would have zero qualms about it. You want to go Trey McBride at pick 28 before Michael Pittman Jr.? You have my blessing, sir. All right, here we go. Here we go. McBride's going to have to compete with Harrison or Neighbors as his running mate. No. Neighbors and Harrison are going to have to compete with Trey McGronksky as their running mate as they learn to play with the big boys in the NFL. McBride moved up to pick 50 at ADP after literally 24 hours. The people who are worried need to chill about that. Are there, wait, are people out here doing that shit? I'm on the clock. I'm already out here getting distracted. You know what? I'm going to do this for Ben Gretsch. I'm going to do this for Ben Gretsch. Romeo Adunze. I'm feeling a little left out on the rookies. Everyone's getting their rookies. Everyone's getting their Marvin Harrisons, their neighbors. Well, guess what? I'm getting on the rookie train. Romeo Adunze. Come on down. Boom. We have started. Jamar Chase, Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddle, Rome Adunze, Trey McBride. I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. A Dunze, maybe I'll just stick with a Dunze. I do Romeo. Ro, I think if if you just say it really fast, I think you can get away with the O because it just rolls into the last name. Romeo Dunze. Romeo Dunze. Josh, I said we're not doing this. I said we're not doing this. Don't hit me with a buddy, Andrew Mackins. Don't hit me with a buddy. On my first draft, you're not going to give me just a little bit of leeway to butcher some of these names. You guys have been out here. 
watching what interviews from the senior bowl actually it's produced rome adunze it is a pretty sick fucking name <clears throat> copper approves what else, what has copper done copper's done puka dj moore keenan allen mike evans ooh and then derrick henry man copper's really lost his fastball he's really lost it Andrew wants you to like the stream. Like it, please. So Calvin Ridley going at pick 60. Huh, we're still doing the Calvin Ridley stuff, huh? DeAndre Hopkins at 61 seems actually pretty nice. My boy JSN going at pick 59. Dalton Kincaid. I mean, this is this is where the Trey McBride pick starts to look so good. Trey McBride at 44, Dalton Kincaid at 62. Easy game. Easy game. Man, I should have I shouldn't have taken McBride. I could have just taken Kittle. Could have gotten the double stack. God, am I gonna have to select George Pickens? Am I gonna have to select George Pickens? No, uh, no, maybe we do. What do we do here, guys? Do we grab a running back? Do we just get some touches? Hmm. Oh no, good call on Burrow. Oh, 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 baby. Now the nimble figures are back. I almost took a running back until I saw Chris just casually uh reference that I had a stack. This is how out of practice I am. I, I hadn't even thought about stacking. All right, we are going to stack up Joe Burrow with Jamar Chase. I don't mind that. I don't mind it. All right, thank you for this PSA. Ryan says you're approaching the worst portion of the draft here. Every click feels awful for two full rounds. I can see that. I mean, looking at all of these picks here. I mean, George Kittle uh, seems very nice in this range. I need more coffee. What it uh what has been your guys' favorite constructions in the big board? Are you guys going three QB? Are you going three tight end? Mainly zero RB. What what has been the uh the popular constructions for you guys? Oh wow. The chat's already getting worked up about a potential ISOVIS clip. I don't know if I have that one in the hopper. I might have to go to my old. All right, so our team so far, we have Joe Burrow stacked up with Jamar Chase, uh, Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddell, uh, Rome Adunze. Don't call him Romeo. Um, and then tight end Trey McBride. No running backs through seven rounds. I do think this is probably the time to start taking some running backs. I'm looking at these, Kamara, Ramondre, and David Montgomery. I really don't want to take Kamara. Um, I feel like I'm either Ramondre or David Montgomery. I, I honestly... David Montgomery might be my favorite of these guys. I, I do like Ramondre too. Um, I'll let the chat decide. Ramondre or David Montgomery? Quick. I know you guys are on a slight delay from me, but quick. All right. Producer Phil says Ramondre. He wins. All right. Ooh, there's good people on both sides of the debate. Oh, no. Wow. Phil, Phil got it in. He was first, but then all of the DeMont votes came in. All right, so we grabbed our first running back. Our first running back selection. I wish I wish I could have told my 2023 summer self, hey, Pete, if you love selecting Ramondre Stevenson at the 2-3 turn, you're going to love selecting him in the middle of the seventh round. I wish I could go tell myself that. I know it is crazy. Chris says, remember the good old days of hating Montgomery on the bears. Yeah. And, uh, it was, 
it was that one year. I forget. I forget the exact year. What was it like three years ago? And he was getting dropped in redraft leagues around. What was it like week six, seven? Like he was unusable in fantasy. And then the Bears schedule got easy. And David Montgomery turned into like goddamn Herschel Walker down the stretch. Um, that was a tough time because there was a lot of victory lapping from the David Montgomery haters, of which there are many, myself included. And then he shoved it down our throats. Look, I, look at this this start from Jay Green here from the 12. So starts Gibbs, Achan, and then just pisses. Cup, Drake London, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, Troy Franklin. Troy goddamn Franklin. The second coming of Tyquan Thornton. The 33rd team told me so. Troy Franklin is going at pick 84. It is, it is honestly wild. I will stop doing the back in my day thing, but like the Troy Franklin types used to go like 17th, 18th round. If this was Best Ball Mania 2, Big Board 2, Big Board 2022, the true good old days. Man, I did kind of hope I could take Najee for the bit, but Copper took him. I feel like I want either Brian Robinson or Jalen Warren. I'll let the chat decide again. I'm feeling so generous. You're catching me when I have essentially zero takes other than my typical age bias. Who should I take? Brian, Wob Brian Robinson or Jalen Warren? We got a little more time for the votes to come in. Hmm. I got... Uh, one J, J, J. Looks like J. Oh, wow. Sorry, guys. Uh, I didn't update my queue in time. Ended up with Brian Robinson, even though the Jays were coming in hot. I do think, like, if you're thinking through, you know, who has more risk as far as with free agency in the draft, it's probably Brian Robinson, right? Because we kind of know what we're getting from the Steelers backfield at this point. Whereas I could see the commanders are just goddamn wild cards, right? Would it, would it surprise anyone if they exhausted some kind of, you know, free agency or draft capital on a running back? Cause what Gibson's gone. They do kind of like Chris Rodriguez. But I doubt they're just going to roll into the season with just B-Rob and Rodriguez. I'm talking myself into uh, thinking that was a mistake of a pick. Hmm. Brendan wanted me to grab uh, James Conner on the way back. I think that would have probably have been fine. Um, James Conner goes at pick 95. It is crazy, right? Like, that's isn't that essentially the same spot James Conner was going last year uh in drafts and he was really really good once he got you know once he got healthy I mean James Conner was a monster down the stretch damn it I was hoping I could get Jalen Warren to come back to me he goes pick 99 so we're about to pick in the ninth here um I think maybe do I just go Kyler here to stack up with McBride and then that gives us kind of lots of outs as far as we could tack on a cheap third, or we're probably done at, at quarterback if we do that, right? But I kind of like that. I think Kyler, I'm not doing Kyle shits yet. Although, what a fall from grace. Actually, man, that's actually a good pick right there, isn't it? Let's go Kyler stacked up with uh, Trey McGronk. I do always kind of like when you make a, a stand, so I by ADP I reached on a, Trey McBride, so stack him up with the quarterback. We need McBride to hit for this lineup. We get, uh, what, about a round of ADP value on Kyler. So this is the team so far. Um, after pissing hard, we have Joe Burrow stacked up with Jamar Chase, Kyler Murray stacked up with Trey McBride. We did select two running backs from Andre Stevenson and Brian Robinson. And our other wide receivers are Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddell, and Rome. It wasn't built in a day, Odunze. Nick says the comps I've heard for Troy Franklin so far, MBS, Will Fuller, Tank Dell, and Randy Moss. I I enjoy I enjoy when comps 
uh, show the full uh, end of the spectrum. I, I downloaded uh, the rookie Rotoviz guide uh, yesterday and just took a glance at it. And I saw one of their um, comps for Marvin Harrison was Justin Blackman. And it's like, no one likes to hear like the dark side of the comps. I mean, Justin Blackman was a really good prospect. Um, obviously didn't pan out for a lot of reasons, but if your if your list of comps for a wide receiver, or whoever are only the most positive outlook names, uh, you're definitely heading into it with rose colored glasses. This actually seems like a pretty fun comp list. The Randy Moss one though is is pretty out of pocket. I think we I think we need to to stick with the uh, the updated ones here. Hmm. All right, we are about to pick in the 10th round here. I'm going to tab off of. Uh... All right, uh, I don't think I want to do anything with tight ends here. I do like my guy Chuba. Chuba, Ty Chandler, I guess, are interesting. Does anyone want to sell me on oh, what a Trey Benson is? Um, I was going to consider Khalil Shakur there. Um I don't mind uh, Dontavian Wicks as well. Should we just grab another running back here? Play the hits with my guy Chuba. I don't, uh, believe it or not, don't have any strong, strong takes here. A lot of, someone mentioned Zamir in the chat. I feel like what? Like Chuba, Zamir, Ty Chandler, those guys all feel somewhat similar-ish to me. Um but when you think about the back, because like Miles Sanders is going to be back, it's kind of like the what the the Jalen Warren, Najee Harris, where you kind of know what that backfield is going to be. I mean, with Zamir White, there's more risk, right? Like it's more of an assumption that he's going to be the lead back. I guess the upside is higher um, if they don't spend any significant capital on another running back. Mm. The people wanted me to go Wix. Oh man, this is how you know we're back. Is is this on his Instagram? Zamir is getting absolutely yoked, and he was already jacked. If there's anything that can just launch an ADP <laughs> out of nowhere. It's a good shirtless pick. Oh man, I really screwed. I I shouldn't have gotten. Did I? Am I getting buried at wide receiver? Did I play too fast and loose with this? The top wide receiver on the board is Adam Thielen. Otherwise, I'm looking at Xavier Worthy. Don't even ask me how to pronounce Adonai Mitchell. Is that why everyone calls him AD Mitchell? Lad McConkey. Oh no. Oh no, this is where I'm outside of my skis. Someone give me a pick. I legit do not know what to do here. I guess, do I take Trey Benson or Jaleel McLaughlin? Mm. Gabe Davis, no. I'm, I I got rookie fever. I don't, I, it, nothing makes me feel more alive than selecting someone who I don't know who they are. Trey Benson, come on down. It is funny transporting myself back to doing big board drafts last year. And I remember I took a shit ton. This is this is the good and the bad. I took a shit ton of Izzy Abandicanda. And I took a shit ton of Devon Achan. And so when I select Trey Benson, in my eye, I'm like, he's either Izzy, a complete zero on the year, or he's Devon Achan. That, that's what, what I see Trey Benson. It's just... Uh, just a, a complete choose your own adventure of trash or treasure. I'm not selecting Adam Thielen. I'm I'm sorry. I know you guys want this to be best ball brunch, but it's not. All right. I got breaking news here, guys. I just saw a DM from my guy Berm at Underdog. I'm going to read it to you verbatim. Let's celebrate your first big board draft with giving away five entries into the big board. 
from people watching in the stream. I get to pick any five. Just give me the usernames and I will take care of the rest. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to use StreamYard has uh, a tool where I can do a giveaway. So I will come up with a hashtag and we will spin for this. And then after, if you win, you're going to have to drop in the um, in the chat your underdog username so we can get you this. Um, all right. The hashtag is going to be Benson. Hashtag Benson in the chat for my new favorite player, Trey Benson. Let me show you uh, what you need to do just so you guys can see the, uh, here it is. Hashtag Benson in the chat. Thank you, Berm and Underdog. Hooking up five entries for you guys watching live here on this Monday morning. For the audio listeners, I'm about to pick in the 12th round. We got Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray, Ramondre, Brian Robinson, Chuba Hubbard, Trey Benson, Jamar Chase, Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddle, Roma Dunze, and Trey McBride. Yes, you will need to spell it correctly to be included in this giveaway. All right, guys, I feel like I need a wide receiver here, but all I see are running back. Did I mess this up? Should I take Addie Mitchell, guys? Someone tell me who I should take. Oh, or should I go Michael Wilson? I guess I have a little bit of room. I think I stacked this up. I think I just said, what, what's not to like about Michael Wilson? I know I asked you guys for your opinion, but I don't need it because I'm taking Michael Wilson. Someone mentioned that before when I took Kyler. I'm taking Michael Wilson. We'll get one of these rookies on the comeback. Hmm. All right. This is, uh, it seems like I'm doing engagement farming, but I'm honestly just asking for a friend. Who is your guys' favorite late round value in big board drafts? Rounds 13 and on. Who is your favorite value? Let me see him in the chat. I'm not asking for any specific reason whatsoever. I'm just literally curious. Favorite value after pick 148 in current big board drafts. Javon Baker, never heard of him. Ray Davis, have heard of him from before because apparently he was going in the 20th round. Lock it. Ugh. Isn't he going to become a real estate agent soon? Dylan Johnson, never heard of him. Trey Palmer, I remember Trey Palmer. J.K. Dobbins, now that's spicy. Yeah, what are we doing with the Ravens' backfield? Uh, Jalen McMillan, Jalen Wright. Willis, get out of here. Uh, Drake May, we still got hashtags. Demario Douglas, that's kind of an interesting one there. Build out our bet on the Patriots. Is this the uh, the Notre Dame running back? Uh, Brevin Jordan. Ooh, that seems gross. Likely seems fun. Multiple of you guys like Tyler Lockett? Wow. What's up, Tyler? D-Rob? Okay. Dylan Loeb? Malachi Corley? Oh, this is the guy that uh, Davis said was going to be our new Sky Moore. Davis already trying to pre-mush him. It's like, let us mush him, dude. Don't you mush him before we get a chance to mush him. Dude, Adam Thielen, why does Pat have him in the ranks so high? This is disgusting. Who should I take, guys? Is this another, this feels like another running back pick. I mean, Khalil Herbert honestly seems fine. Khalil Herbert seems like a good pick here, right? All right, we're taking Khalil Herbert. Ooh, where is Elijah Moore going? Wow, Elijah Moore at 173. Don't hate it. Get the likes up. Listen to Tyler. Get the likes up. 
uh, Singletary. It's it's funny. I, I think uh, you know last year I spent so much of my summer drafting either one of Devin Singletary or Chuba Hubbard with one of my last couple picks. I was like, I need to liven things up again. I already took Chuba. We can't just play the hits. Here, here's a question for you guys. I mean, someone in the chat saying Aaron Rodgers, someone wanted me to take Drake May earlier. On this construction, we're obviously going 20 rounds with the big board draft, not the 18. Do I do I just rock with Joe Burrow and Kyler here, or are we done at quarterback? That's the question. Tight end definitely getting pretty gross, although... Actually, I, I don't mind the uh I don't mind the fryer, likely. Apparently there's someone named Jatavian Sanders here. Yeah. Go go in three QB. Yeah, do two and go three QB. Well, this is what we're talking out right now. To me, it's more about how I spent my draft capital. Um, you know, spending pick 68 and pick 101 on quarterbacks, I, I think I need to ride with these two. Um, I'm I'm at five uh, running backs, five wide receivers, and just one tight end. It does seem like a two tight end build at this stage with Trey McBride, like Trey McBride with Waller, Trey McBride with Otten, Trey McBride with Sanders, that feels pretty thin. So I think I am agreeing with the three tight end build there. Oh my God, Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims back. Dude, look at Traylon Burks and Marvin Mims. Algier, Eli Mitchell. Mm. Pretty much like going to be close to being done with running backs, right? Here. Fuck it, man. I had to do it. Just let me do it. Just let me do it. Marvin Mims. I selected Marvin Mims. Just let me do it. Will someone just let me do it? You really want me to take Jalen Polk over Marvin Mims? Just wait until Sean Payton gets a quarterback in there that he can actually look in the eyes and not loathe with every fiber in his being. The second that happens, Marvin Mims is getting unlocked. <sighs> All right, we'll we'll uh we'll do the giveaways uh at the end of this draft. If you guys want to be included in the drawing to win a free big board entry, compliments of our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Shout out Berman for sliding this promo into my DMs. Hashtag Benson in the chat. That's spelled B-E-N-S-O-N. We have 94 entries right now. That gives you a greater than a 1 in 20 chance as of right now to win a free big board entry. Do you know who else actually seems like a good pick? Isn't Zay Jones a pretty good pick? They're not, I mean, they're not going to be able to, well, I guess it's Christian Kirk who's probably the one who's going to for sure be there. Hmm. I don't mind Zay. I legit don't know any of these guys. Marshawn Lloyd, Jatavian Sanders, Devontez Walker, Ricky Pearsall. I took Zay Jones. This is now, now we're just making shit up. I'm not sure if he's in the player pool, but Isaac Guerrero. Sam, can we just kind of like, can I just walk this back? So I said your favorite value in underdog drafts. And you suggested a guy, you don't even know if he's in the player pool. How would that make him a value if you've not even selected him? You don't even know if he's in the player pool. He is not in the player pool. There is a Pete Guerrero, but that's that's all I can do for you, Sam. You're damn right it's gross. I 
I like this guy. Anytime I say Benson, he just shouts out, be on edge, son. I like that. <sighs> All right, Zay Jones cut candidate. I was mixing up uh, the Christian Kirk and Zay Jones situation. I like Christian Kirk. Hubert wants me Googling the rookies to see who looks best. I'm trying to ease into it. Let's let's see what Trey Benson looks like. Oh, yeah. That's a stud right there. Look at this. He just looks like a nice young man. Look at that. And look at that. That is range right there. That's my running back right there, baby. I named three good flyers. Sometimes you got to IKB Pat's ranks the first time you do a draft. I did see that name. I did see that name. Kool-Aid McKinistry. Is that how you say it? Hmm. All right. So we have what? Four more picks? No, five. Wow. We got a long way to go. I forgot that these 20 round drafts are no picnic. Should I just take you talk? If I'm if I'm taking three tight ends, one of them might as well be a fun mystery box, right? Someone someone tell me who uh Jatavian Sanders is. Cause I'm about to click him. Somebody tell somebody tell me who this is. Cause he's on my team now. God, it's it's an electric feeling to select players you know nothing about other than what position they play. I know one thing about Jatavian Sanders, and that it's he plays the tight end position. Look at that. Oh, I like that. Buttoning the top button on the polo. That's a power move right there. I like that. I like that flex. Look at that ball control. Getting ready for the game. Sanders is a baller. He's a tight end. I did confirm that. Zero drops on 64 targets last year. All right. Spags loves him. Okay. All right. I'm in. I'm in. It's confirmation bias season. The second you draft a player, all of a sudden, they are him. All right, that's the last coffee pour of the day, I think. Last call here uh, for the Benson giveaway entries. If you're watching live on YouTube right now, you just put in hashtag Benson, B-E-N-S-O-N. We got 108 entries. When the draft is over, we will be giving away five big board entries to five different users. We are on the clock here. God, Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman. Who's this Dylan Loeb guy? Is this is this where we just start clicking guys who we don't know? I could also take Tyler Boyd. Let's do Tyler Boyd here first. Get that double stack with uh with Joe Burrow. This is the th this is what's going to happen. The Bengals are going to tag and trade T. Higgins. Tyler Boyd is going to rightfully ascend to the number two slot in the Bengals, and I just got an absolute steal. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. I am willing to triple stack. Thank you, Dustin. It's nice to have someone saying welcome back instead of just shouting Benson at me in the chat. Oh, I guess I did that to myself. Don't worry, guys. To all of the Iasovis over Boyd crew, por que no los dos? Jalen McMillan. Oh, see, this is Beastburf, his galaxy braining Tyler Boyd to Arizona. Pete is just donating today. Yes, Pete's very first draft where he's done zero research and is crowdsourcing picks to the 
to the draft. I, I mean, I really thought I was going to be getting it in good today, Andy. I really did. I said, I want to make my, how much do these entries cost? $10. The expected value of this lineup. I, I want to make sure I come out of this draft, making sure this lineup is worth at least $12 in equity. And oh no, it might actually be worth $9 because it's my first draft. What am I doing? This is the energy I need. Welcome back and be on the edge, son. There you go. British gridiron films. Always bringing the heat. Guys, I already took Tyler Boyd. It's because he's going to Arizona. Sometimes you got to galaxy brain your stacks ahead of time. That would be a good bit. I famously was only able to draft one single Jalen Tolbert share last year. Maybe now I pack my bags. God damn it. Someone took Iasovis. You didn't even let me redeem myself. Sorry, Bindles. I let you guys down. I let you down. That's on me. I was going to try to get Iasovis coming back, and I messed it up. Jamari Thrash. Now that's a sick fucking name right there. We're at a 2582. Ugh, these tight ends look gross as hell. Should we do Loeb? Someone tell me about this guy I just selected. Otherwise, I'll let Google Images do it. If you're not going to tell me, I'll let Google Images tell me. Oh, no. What have I done? <laughs> what have I done? What did I just do? No! What did I just do? Oh, no. How would someone, why didn't someone tell me? Why didn't someone tell me? Look at this photo. He's looking at these weights that he can't even lift up. He's like, these are too heavy for me. Oh, no. Someone should have told me. Oh, God. They say you can just blindly click rookies in this draft and print money. Hmm. God damn it. That guy in the chat was right. I'm donating today. I'm absolutely donating. This looks like a guy that Rex Ryan would call a little fucker on hard knocks. Isn't that what he called Danny Woodhead? <laughs> Wasn't that the clip where he's like, look at that little fucker out there. All right. So we're at a, we're at a two, six, eight, two. We need another tight end and then what? Another rookie wide receiver? I think we need another rookie wide receiver. Are we taking Jamari Thrash? I think we take Jamari Thrash. Actually, this. You tell me which one of these rookies I'm taking. Jamari Thrash, Jacob Cowing, or Johnny Wilson. Which one? <laughs> See, it's nice someone is just being honest around here. You guys all act like you're these big draft know-it-alls. At least American man comes in here with the super chat and says, I didn't know he was white either. That's a shocker for the audio listeners who didn't know why I was so worried about my Dylan Loeb selection. All right, thrash it is. Thrash it is. And then we got to figure out a, a last round tight end selection. He's Walmart, Cooper Cup. They don't even play the same position. A lot of thrash heads in the chat. Oh, there's a Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson. A thrash man. I like that. All right. There's some cowing love. Luke McCaffrey. That I at least know what I'm getting into. I will not be shocked when I Google Luke McCaffrey. Hmm. All right. Which tight end should I take? We got to land the plane with a tight end. Who's it going to be? Oh, no. Noah Gray. Ooh. Tanner Hudson for the Iosovis fail? Honestly, I don't hate that. We're at it. We're at a two six nine two. Someone in the chat saying, uh, "Why another tight end?" Because uh, I think, because I think that's where we're we're weakest right now. 
I mean, Trey McGronk is going to carry this team, but like Jatavian Sanders, let's just be honest with ourselves, guys. If we're talking about a rookie tight end who's not going to get massive draft capital, he could be a stone cold zero. He could be our generation's Darnell Washington. I think it would be nice to have a third tight end on this team. Hudson's a free agent too? God damn. He better have the best hands. Super Dave talking about my uh, Dylan Lobb pick. Parham, Jelani Woods, Cole Turner. So we have no consensus on a good tight end. Bindles, thank you. This is so nice of you. Uh, I've been meaning to figure out uh, how to do this, but Bindles just gifted five uh, memberships. Bindles, how does this even work? How do we know who got them? That was very nice of you. With these memberships, you guys can watch um, the Best Ball After Dark shows, DFS After Dark shows, get access to the uh, the premium channels in the Discord. Hmm. Ooh, Christopher got one. Here we go. Oh, Thomas got one. Now I can actually see you with it there. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. Very nice of you, Bindles. By the way, check out Bindles. Bindles has his own YouTube channel. I know he's been doing some drafts. Uh, did a draft, did I see the other day with Spags and uh, Emo Cowboy? Check out Bindles. Good dude. Grinding the best ball streets. Um... Yeah, it says who got them in the chat. Sweet. Yeah, I couldn't see uh, on my StreamYard interface who got them. All right, final pick. Did we not have a consensus at tight end? You know what? This is what I'm going to do. Someone way back when, when I said, who are the best values, someone said Brevin Jordan. And I said gross, but they said it. They called their shot a long time ago. Look, you can do worse than being tied to CJ Stroud in one of the best up-and-coming offenses. I'm going to take Brevin Jordan to land the plane on my first... 2024 draft. Is it perfect? No. Is it passable? I honestly don't know. But it felt fun to be back in the mix. I definitely uh, need to brush up on my contract situation stuff. Tyler Boyd, I, I would love that to be Iosovis. I fucked up. That's on me. And that's Bindle's boy, by the way, too. For those of you guys who are new around here, last year, like around this time, it was big board time, Bindle's himself, gave uh, away uh, or made me an Iosovis clip. And this was in what, Bindles? That had to have been in like, what, after the combine? So maybe March of 2023? I didn't know anyone else who was this early on Iosovis than Bindles. And the fact that I didn't take him as an homage, as a hat tip, that's on me. I messed up. I think I ended up having one Iasova share in Best Ball Mania. I think I drafted it with Bime 4, one of the last drafts I did. He was having me draft. We drafted two rookies together that I didn't have at all in my portfolio. Who was the guy on uh, Pittsburgh? Who was their small rookie wide receiver? It was Iasovas and him. I, I honestly don't think I'm going to do uh, slows. I think at least for now, I'm going to, I'm going to do another draft right now, but I think for now I am going to do two things exclusively. I will draft on stream and I will do cardio club drafts. I think those are my two people in the discord. Uh, GA was saying he thinks I'm going to max the big board. Basically what happened last year is I was just doing, you know, stream some fast and then at the last second, I decided I'm going to max the big board via slows. And I registered for like 70 slow drafts at once. And it was a, it was a rough time. But one of my things this offseason, I'm, I'm building up better habits. And I think one of those habits is not always pulling up my phone <laughs> to make picks. So I'm going to keep my drafting for now to fast drafts and cardio club drafts. But we shall see. As, as you guys know, the best ball bug, it's an infectious bug. Sometimes it's hard to keep at bay. But that's where I'm at right now. All right, let's do one more draft. I'm in the mood. Let's hang around. Uh, oh, we got to do the giveaway. Sorry, we're going to do the giveaway first here. Um, we're going to draw five names. If you win, 
you need to drop your underdog username in the comments after. That's what I'm going to give to Berm over at Underdog, who is going to credit you with a free big board entry. So um, I will uh, make sure that these winners know to drop their underdog username. Uh, winner, TMS, our first winner, TMS, drop your underdog username in the comments when this stream is over. Not the live chat. It won't stay here. When this stream is over, drop it so I can go check. TMS, you are our first winner. We're going to draw again. Chris Diaz, there you go. Shout out Chris Diaz, a grinder in the chat. You just won a free ticket to a big board draft. Compliment of our friends over at Underdog. We're going to draw three more. Who do we got next? Johnny, Johnny T 007 B. Thought I saw Johnny in the chat earlier. Congrats, Johnny, when the show is over. Drop your underdog username in the comments. Two more winners. Once again, thank you to Underdog Fantasy, the platform of the people, for hooking us up with five free entries. Mr. Mister, God, who runs purer than Mr. Mister? Goodness gracious, Mr. Mister, a.k.a. TM Longacre. Even though I know your underdog username, drop it in the chat, uh, the comments after the show, so I have it. And our final winner of a big board entry to celebrate the kickoff draft here. Who do we got? It is the Consigliere, another one of our regulars on the channel. Congratulations, five winners. Thank you, Underdog. Thank you, Berm. Thank you, Chat, for hanging out today. Let's rip one more draft. I'm having a good time. We're learning players. I am registered. We need three more people. Let's update the banner and get rolling. Big board draft number two. We have the 103 slot. Actually, real quick, I'm gonna have to uh I'm gonna have to name my team here. I'm gonna have to name my team. So we got uh da, 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 da. how did we name these? Man, it's been so long. I used to name the only ones I ever name are on stream. So we got number one, uh best ball breakfast. Uh da, 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 da. um, I kind of like having the date in here too for these. 226 best ball breakfast. We got ourselves a nice little 2693. Boom. First draft is named. And we are back to the, the draft board. Who do we got in here? Not all uh red badges this time around. Ooh, we got my uh we got my producer burn zone in here. Good to see. Oh, you're right. You're right. We should release the ducks. I'll release the ducks. Hmm. The ducks have been fed. All right, we're on the clock. 103. Um, man, that's interesting, man. Tyree Kill's going ahead of Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Do we like that? I think I might be Jefferson. Am I crazy? I mean, I know there's uncertainty with the quarterback stuff there. I think I'm going Justin Jefferson, guys. Are you guys taking Jefferson or Tyreek? Or are you just splitting your exposure? Super Dave is with me on JJ there. Nolan's taking Tyreek 101. Hmm. JJ all day, yeah. Where where is the tier for you guys? Like looking at these, I, I think I think Brees Hall's in that first tier. Do you guys include Amon Ra in there? I think once you get down to the Bijan Puka, I think there's a tier break there. I guess it's it's where do you have it? Do you have it at five, six, or seven for that first tier? Because I think I think CMC is in a tier of his own. 
and then I think like two for me, like two through seven is pretty close. Maybe it's two through six. Maybe I put Amon Rajas in a slightly lower tier. Nick is mixing it up. Looks like most of you are Tyreek, which is what the ADP uh, reflects. Yeah, Bindles has the tier after Brees. Um, guys, the uh, the Benson, if you're watching on slight delay, uh, the, the Benson giveaway has occurred. Yeah, this is how I this is how I live a little. I take Justin Jefferson ahead of Tyreek Hill to own the ADP slaves. I think it's fair to include St. Brown with that. How many how many drafts have you guys all done? I, I need to know how far behind I am. How many big board drafts do you guys have completed right now? I need to even check the fill rate. I didn't even see. Where are we at? Hold, okay, so we're at exactly or just over 30% filled. The latest the contest will be open is until 425. Um, only three for JGFC. 25 for Mr. Mr. 33. Five. One. Hey, team one, brothers. Three for Brandon, 51. Kyle holding out zero. Josh around 50. 20, 143 for American Man. American Man, 143. And didn't even know Dylan Loeb was white. You love to see it. Uh, ben uh, is at 77. Six for Broncos. Josh is at 78. Nick, my God, 110. 52. British is just here for the tips. I love to hear it. Uh, zero. Hey, there's no shame around here. We all have to draft at our own pace. Big Dan has a nice little mix of slows and fast. Christopher's at 10. Oh, Max the Little Board. Yeah. Did the Little Board officially fill? Yeah, I think so, because I didn't see it in the lobby when I registered. Joshua is at zero. I bet there'll be, you know, post-combine, there'll probably be another wave of interest. All right, so we started Justin Jefferson. We're about to pick here at 210, our second big board draft of the year. This is Best Ball Breakfast. I'm Pete Overzet. I love streaming at this Monday 10 a.m. block. I got some fun plans for this block as we progress throughout the offseason. Um, last draft, I took Brandon Ayuk. We do have Rashi Rice here. I still have like a slight bit of sticker shock here with Rashi Rice. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, ADP, we got the leg up ranks in here that have him at the top. I'll take Rashi Rice. I do not feel confident that I know better at this point. So I'm going to start Justin Jefferson and Rashi Rice. And we will not get buried by a wide receiver avalanche. Mike says, on principle, I won't draft before the NFL draft. Um, let's see what Chad Candles do. I would, I would love to, uh, to take, uh, uh, Tank Dell here if he falls to me. I think Tank Dell is what, probably one of the more obvious risers over the course of the off season. Once we get news about his injury recovery, we got a blurb here expects to participate in OTAs. Like to me, if there were zero injury concerns. I would I would take Tank Dell over Rashi Rice straight up. Um, to me, Tank Dell feels like when Best Ball Mania season is rolling, let's say what, late July, early August, to me, Tank Dell feels like an early to mid-second pick. So we've started Justin Jefferson, Rashi Rice, Tank Dell out of the three hole. One thing uh, I'll be talking about more uh, lately uh, as we uh, get going here is I'm going to be making more uh, videos on 
the Deposit Kingdom channel. So this stream is, or this channel is for my live streams. Um, this channel is where I'll be making uh, non live stream videos. So I plan to do more best ball strategy content and really kind of ramp it up. This is where I did, you know, the week 17 is all that matters video. Um, but I want to make more of these types of videos this year. Uh, last year did one where I reviewed uh, Pat's million dollar lineup, had a video about how to combat the three wide receiver uh, or three ways to battle wide receiver avalanches. So more evergreen strategy videos. I'd love if you guys subscribe to that channel. You can turn the notifications on because I'm going to be getting videos rolling over there uh, as the off season progresses. Really excited to uh, kind of ramp that up and devote more time to those types of videos. I already have a few in mind. So if you guys aren't subscribed to the Deposit Kingdom YouTube channel, make sure you are. And we will continue to have a nice mix of live streams and other videos for you guys this summer. I have noticed that is this a is this a chalk stack? I feel like I've seen when I've seen like some draft boards posted, you go AJ Brown at the one two turn, and then you take Hertz and Devonte Smith at the three four turn. Is that a is that a popular stack based on ADP? What is it? Because Brown is pick eleven, so it makes sense. Um, Hertz is. Pick 34, close to the 3-4 turn, and Devonta is 36, yeah. So by, like, ADP correlated, that has to be a fairly popular double stack. Ash, do I think underdog comes to UK in the end? I like the in the end there. When it's all said and done, will underdog have a, a presence overseas? Um, as I understand it, uh, it's going to be pretty tough for that to happen. Um, kind of the, you know, the licensing and the, the fees associated with getting up and running over there are pretty prohibitive as I understand it. I know, uh, Jeremy, the CEO of underdog did an interview with Levitan on his podcast, uh, last year. And I believe he was asked that question and they have to really pick their spots, um, as far as where they are, um, expanding just because of those costs for getting up and running in different jurisdictions. Um, Travis Kelsey at this spot, do we just set up? Man, I really, we do have the Rashi Rice bet. It's either Zay or Kelsey for me, I think. I don't really want to take a running back right now. I'm going to, there were some nice tight end values I felt in that last draft, so I'm not going to take Kelsey there. We'll make a bet that Rashi Rice is the alpha and we will uh, we'll kick tight end down the road. So we go Zay Flowers. So we started Justin Jefferson and then three sophomore wide receivers, Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, and Zay Flowers. Yes, I, I do know this, Dave. I am, I am rusty as I individually type out each Eagles name. Could just type Eagles in the search. I do actually know that, um, but I am off my game right now. All right, we got a few different options of where we can go here. Um, the chat, you know, we could go Travis Kelsey and try to build out a bet on, man, I feel like at this point, do I need to take Kelsey at 51? I mean, Mahomes went early, right? Yeah, Mahomes went at pick 43. Um, I think we take Travis Kelsey. Like, we're, we're betting on the Chiefs to be good again, obviously, by investing pick 22 in Rashi Rice. Travis Kelsey definitely needs to slide in drafts relative to where he was last year. But man, like at this price, at pick 5-3, pick 51, I mean, it's almost a full five-round or, or four-round discount, rather, on his price last year. I think I can stomach that. So we have a similar start. Last time, we started with four wide receivers and a tight end, I believe. We do it again here. Justin Jefferson, Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, and Travis Kelsey. Piss and Pete back at it. I mean, it. it I do think, like, I, I can justify zero RB at basically any point in the calendar, but I do think it's uh, 
particularly effective when we have so much uncertainty right now? Like we know wide receivers and talent um, drive targets, wide receivers earn targets. So when you're just betting on talent, I'm not really worried about what's Houston going to do in the draft. That's going to ruin Tank Dell's value. What are the Ravens going to do that's going to ruin Zay Flowers? What are the Chiefs going to do that's going to ruin Rashi Rice? Like the the risk in these picks is just so much lower than it is with the running backs. There is so much risk between free agency, between uh, the NFL draft, obviously with these running backs, where you could have legit landmines. Like I get terrified thinking of a pick like Isaiah Pacheco at pick 45. And it's not to say there aren't ways that that doesn't work out. Like they don't add anyone and Pacheco's the lead back and he pays off that draft slot. Um, But uh, there is a lot of chance for those picks to go wrong with so much information yet to come. So, uh, I, I mean, I probably don't need to sell a lot of you guys on zero RB, but it almost just comes naturally this early in the draft season. It's like, I mean, every single one of these running backs, you know, you have, I guess a a, a running back like Kenneth Walker, you might be like, all right, I know what that backfield's going to be. It's going to be Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet. Um, I know who Walker is and I feel fine with that profile, similar to like the Najee Harris, Jalen Warren stuff where it's like, I don't think they're going to add anything there. I know what I'm going to get, but you look at so many of these backs, Pacheco, uh, James Cook, Rashad White, Derrick Henry, Aaron Jones. Like, I don't think you can make sweeping conclusions about what their projected volume outlook or backfield competition or even overall team scenario is going to look like at this time of the year. Let's do our rookie watch here. Uh, Marvin Harrison went at a similar spot, went to uh, Phil here at pick 18. Malik Neighbors went at 34. Uh, what did I take him at? Did I take him at pick 30 in the last draft? And then where did Adunze went at pick 50? Brian Thomas goes at pick 66. Uh, I was hoping Christian Kirk would fall to me at 68. He seems very insulated from that stuff as far as whatever's going to happen with Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk. But I am going to go ahead and take DeAndre Hopkins here. I mentioned him last draft. I mean, there's essentially no target competition. What? You got to think Will Levis improves. We hope he improves. Um, I'll take DeAndre Hopkins here for a pretty classic zero RB start. Justin Jefferson, Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, DeAndre Hopkins, tight end Travis Kelsey. And now we probably want to swing over to running back, which looks like the board is going to be conducive to because we want to keep what? A few of those wide receivers in the chamber, either for the rookie flyers or for completing some stacks. Where did Stroud end up going? He was the other guy I was deciding if I didn't take Kelsey, CJ Stroud does go at pick 58 to the Nico Collins drafter. That certainly makes sense. That's a fun start, right? Garrett Wilson, Nico Collins, Malik Neighbors, Drake London, then CJ Stroud come back with Terry McLaurin, who should hopefully be getting a quarterback upgrade. All right, uh, Prescott goes. Why don't we do Tajay Spears? I was eyeing him last draft. We have a uh, a bet on the Titans offense already with DeAndre Hopkins. Let's go ahead and add Tajay Spears five picks past ADP here. Hmm. This is a good question. Are you going to go three tight end to give Kelsey injury insurance or two tight end? I guess I wouldn't, to me... At this point in the year, I'm not I'm not thinking about injury insurance, right? Like, I want to be drafting like I'm right. Even taking Travis Kelsey at pick 51, I'm assuming he is a top five tight end on the year. The way I think about two tight ends versus three tight ends is, where is my second tight end coming? You know, if I take, let's just say I take an Evan Ingram, David Njoku, Jake Ferguson, Kyle Pitts, I'm definitely going to be done because I've spent two top 100 picks at the tight end position. But if I find myself in the spot that I did last draft where I waited to take, you know, a rookie, uh, Jatavian Sanders as my tight end two, then I haven't spent that much draft capital on the whole on my tight end. And I think I want to tack on the third. So I'm thinking about it more from 
a draft capital allocation standpoint than I am like specific to Travis Kelsey's, you know, health situation. So our start here through uh, seven rounds, no quarterbacks. We got uh, anchor Tajay Spears. We should do we should do rebranding on zero RB so it doesn't sound as scary and just start saying it's anchor running back and your anchor running back is just whoever you take even if it's at pick seventy five. I have an anchor RB build with Tajay Spears, who probably weighs like one hundred and eighty pounds soaking wet. Uh, wide receivers: Justin Jefferson, Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, DeAndre Hopkins, and tight end Travis Kelsey. Supa likes Hopkins as a fifth wide receiver. Christopher, freshly minted YouTube member, likes Brock Bowers as a two-time Mackey Award winner. Wow. I've heard ADP being a social construct, but Chris coming in with an even more existential comment, best ball is a social construct. Paulino, welcome to the stream, but the Benson giveaway <laughs> happened about 30 minutes ago. Again, as a reminder, um, if you guys become YouTube members on the channel, uh, the best ball value hounds tier specifically get you access to a few things. Uh, I, I didn't do it today because I'm getting my bearings, but I will tip off when I'm going to hop in drafts and I will use that channel in the Discord. Basically, you become a YouTube member and then Discord has a thing where you can sync your YouTube membership and it will unlock that premium channel. So we got a premium channel in there. Also get you access to the best ball after dark shows that I do every Saturday night. They were DFS after dark. It's going to be morphing into uh, best ball after dark. I actually reached out to a guest earlier today. So hopefully we'll get that nailed down for Saturday night. And uh, and yeah, so those are um, some nice value adds. And you get access to the entire archive of videos there. I have them all in a playlist. So if you become a member and want to go check those out, they're all evergreen conversations. They're not specific to a slate. Um, getting to know guests, talking strategy, talking content, all that kind of good stuff here. We are back on the clock here. I took Brian Robinson last draft. I don't really feel like taking him. Maybe what? where are we at on Javante Williams? Last year was like an interesting run out for him as far as I feel like he played and took over the backfield earlier than maybe people suspected and yet didn't necessarily perform at the level we were all hoping. But I don't mind him at this price. Pick 94 is my RB2. Again, trying to make like, hoping that with another year removed from that injury, that offense getting a little more functional. I don't know. Seems like a decent flyer there at pick 94 as part of a zero RB. Nay, an anchor running back room. Chat wants me to take Troy Franklin. I could take Troy Franklin. All right. Do you want me to take Troy Franklin? It's right at ADP. I heard he's either the next Randy Moss or the next MVS. That sounds like a fun choose your adventure. All right. I'll do it for the people. Troy Franklin, pick 100. I guess where, I know people are curious to see how much he weighs in at the combine. Where is his projected draft capital right now? Is he a back end of round one guy? I guess you're really thinking like, if he's a back end of round one guy, he probably is going to go, obviously depending on the situation, like in that Zay Flowers range, right? Where Zay Flowers was going. I guess at different points of the offseason, you know, eighth, ninth round, then steamed up into the seventh. If he ends up being what, like more of a mid-second pick, then you're maybe more in Rashi Rice territory where he's probably like a 10th or 11th pick. So his ADP right now is probably middling it, right? Where if, um, if things are bullish, his landing spot, first round draft capital, he's probably going higher than pick 100. If not, he's probably going lower than this and you're just kind of splitting the difference. Yeah, people excited if he's a back end of round one, Bills, Ravens, or Chiefs. Yeah. 
Aaron says, back into round one for some, mid-second for others. Could maybe cement first this week if he scorches. Seems like a good bet to make in ahead of the combine. Like if you're trying to play the market game of who are the guys that could rise because of a performance where that stuff does get double counted a lot, right? Where it's like, we're taking Troy Franklin right here because he's fast and he was productive or whatever. Whereas then if he is fast at the combine, everyone's going to be like, holy shit, he's fast. Let me take him in the seventh round. It's like, didn't we already kind of know that? Where it seems like the appropriate reaction is really only to move him down from here if he isn't as fast as we thought versus double counting and pushing him up. So it doesn't seem like a bad spot to pack your bag on some of these guys who are maybe more dependent on whatever their weight, their size, their speed. American man, thank you for the super chat again, says he can go round one and he has an ADP of 72 on drafters. I have 40% plus exposure. That's a healthy amount. It is always helpful to look at other markets um, like that, uh, looking at the ADPs and stuff. I do always find that to be a helpful exercise. <laughs> Nick wants him to go to his Panthers, but no one else wants that. What's up, Sam? We are indeed back. Best Ball Breakfast. We'll be rolling every Monday morning at 10 a.m. For the start, it'll just be me. We'll start layering in some guests, though, as the offseason progresses. And uh, and then, of course, uh, once we really start heating up, we will, uh, we'll be getting more Best Ball Breakfast guests on here. Um, Caleb Williams is at the top of the queue. Jonathan Brooks. Should we have some rookie fun? I feel like it'd be fun to do to have some rookie fun um or do we think caleb williams as the adp faller let's do jonathan brooks i want to i want to have some rookie fun here jonathan brooks he seems like another guy right depending on his landing spot that feels like a pretty obvious riser like if you think about where the adps were last year for the running backs who we felt confident were going to lead a committee. Like then you're in that Isaiah Pacheco, David Montgomery, Damian Pierce range, seventh, eighth round. If he's the first running back off the board and he's going to lead a committee, he's probably going to jump what three rounds. At least we just took him in the 10th at 118. maybe three rounds at least is too bullish. At least, at least a couple rounds. If he's projected to be the lead back on an offense and got second round draft capital. take Caleb for Davis. Um, oh shit. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, wow. Hang on. No, I don't want two Broncos running backs. Wow. I panicked. I was looking at the chat. I was looking at the draft board, uh, and we panic click Ty Chandler. I honestly don't mind it. Now we have our little, uh, running back wide receiver duos. So we have Tajay Spears, Justin Jefferson, uh, or sorry, Tajay Spears, Deandre Hopkins, Ty Chandler, Justin Jefferson. As far as panic clicks go, I don't hate it. Kyle says, what do you think about Trey McBride if the cards pick up Harrison? Yeah, the people were talking about this before. Um, to me, like, I'm, in general, I'm always more of um, a rise, a ri like, if I if I power rank my things that I care about, like, I, I want a player to be good. I want them to earn targets. And then I want the offense and the overall pie to be big. Like, that's number two. And then number three is, like, what percentage of that pie are you getting? Um and I think people overthink it so much where it's like, how many wide receiver duos did we have going in the top two to three rounds last year? Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown. And the reason those ADPs were justified was because one, all of those duos were very good football players who could earn targets consistently. And two, the overall offensive environment was conducive to supporting multiple pass catchers. So if my thesis is... Trey McBride is really good and M Marvin Harrison is really good. And because those guys are really good, the offense improves and scores a lot of points. Like to me, I'm not getting worried about 
Trey McBride's target share going from 24% to 21% because Marvin Harrison is getting his. If anything, I think it is bearish for the ancillary players, the, the Michael Wilsons, the Rondell Moores. Those are the guys that get squeezed. I think good players earn targets and injecting him into the offense just makes that a better team. More first downs, more red zone opportunities, more scoring. So I'm just not going to worry about it in those situations. I think Marvin Harrison would be good for Trey McBride overall because a lot of times what happens is you offset a little bit of target volume with increased efficiency. Now Trey McBride, I mean, Trey McBride was getting double and triple team down the stretch last year. You're not going to be able to do that if Marvin Harrison is on the field. So to me, it's a, it's neutral at worst and most likely a, a positive. All right, we're about to pick at 142. We have a 4-6-1 build going. No quarterbacks yet. Uh, we have Tajay Spears, Javante Williams, Jonathan Brooks, Ty Chandler. Our wide receivers are Justin Jefferson, Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, DeAndre Hopkins, and Troy Franklin. Uh, tight end, Travis Kelsey. And it looks like we are definitely in a range here. Uh, Drake May seems like a fun pick, right? He's at the top of uh, Karain's ranks. I am using his ranks over at Legendary Upside. I think they do a great job with those, him and his team. We need uh, a running back ADP. He's only three picks ahead of ADP. We're living a little, having some fun drafting rookies in our second ever big board draft for 2024. Drake May, come on down. So now we got Troy Franklin, rookie wide receiver, Jonathan Brooks, rookie running back, Drake May, rookie quarterback here. Is Hollywood even on the Cardinal next season? Yeah, I didn't even mention him when I was going through that, that Cardinals breakdown. It doesn't sound like it. Someone refresh my memory on what, is he a, is he an, a restricted or unrestricted free agent? Wally likes the Drake May pick. Oops, we're back on the clock. I need to pick again. Um, screw it. Let's have. I, I'm 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 in rookie mode. I'm in rookie mode. I'm taking uh, Audric. How do you pronounce his last name? Let me just butcher it for fun, and then you guys can all correct me. I'm going to say it's Audric Estime. By my estimations, Estime. He's he's the Notre Dame guy, right? Is that who he is? Yeah. Notre Dame. Okay. I'm sold. I'm sold. Esteem. Ooh, look at this. We have pronunciation wars in the chat. Estime and esteem. Now I don't know which one was correct. What, what did I say? Estime, I think is what I said. What's up, Michael? Where is, um, I'm trying to think like what my quarterback plan will be here. This is probably a three quarterback build. Drake May, first quarterback at pick 142. Um, you know, looking at quarterback options, I think Will Levis certainly makes sense for this team. Who do we think is going to be the Vikings quarterback this year? That would be a nice piece of information to know for this one. Obviously, no more stacks available for Houston, for Baltimore, for KC. So we're at a 1561 build. Are there any tight ends? See, now we're back in that same spot we are with tight ends. So we're, we're probably going to end up with a three quarterback, three tight end build here. That's just my gut even with travis kelsey i feel like i kind of missed the the two tight end window even with guys like pat fryermuth michael mayer i think you maybe could have gotten away with it it feels a little thin at this point what's up chief smoke welcome to being a youtube member here on the channel make sure you join the deposit kingdom discord we got all kinds of great channels. If you guys haven't taken the leap in there, we got a few premium channels. We got one, obviously, for Best Ball Breakfast. We got a ship chasing one in there. Um, we also have the Badge Bros are in there. 
So if you guys are playing any of the various underdog sports, there's individual threats. None of those are paywalled. Um, those are free to anyone who wants to hop in there. So if you're grinding golf, if you're grinding NBA, uh, if you're grinding puck, uh, there's threads in there. We got the big board. We got general best ball channel. We got the book club channel. We got all kinds of stuff going on in the deposit kingdom. So if you become a YouTube member, make sure you sync up and take advantage of those additional channels here. This draft is speeding along. We're at uh, pick 14 or uh, round 14 here. Is Musgrave there? Yeah, where are the Green Bay Titans going? So, yeah, Musgrave is gone. Musgrave's going at 134.8. Tucker Craft going at 191.4. My snap take is that that gap is maybe a little too big. That's my snap take. I don't know. I definitely still would take Musgrave ahead of Craft. I'm not that spicy, but that does feel like a pretty big gap. Daniel likes the idea of a Cade Otten Mayfield uh, backdoor stack. This does seem like a team to potentially take the Traylon Burks plunge and then build out, you know, kind of a, a Titans onslaught. I have nothing compelling me to take uh, Deshaun Watson. Well, last, last draft I was on my bullshit and took Marvin Mims. I think it feels vaguely more justifiable to be back on my bullshit. Although, man, this is ahead of ADP. Um, oh, AB, ADP is just a social construct, right? Um, Demario Douglas seems like a good value. He's up here. We're at six, seven. Screw it. I'm going to build out my Titans mega stack, whatever. Whatever. So we got, we're going to need to, who, who who should be our third QB? Because I do plan to take Levis. Would JJ McCarthy, is he the galaxy brain trying to connect the stack for the Vikings? I think we go, let's see here. If I go three, three, six, seven, 13, 18. I think we're one more running back, one more wide receiver, two more tight ends, two more quarterbacks. All right, we're going to miss out on some of the other rookie wide receivers, but we're going to take Demario Douglas there at pick 171, 10 picks past ADP, and probably done at wide receiver. Hmm. Is J.J. McCarthy the most polarizing prospect right now? He's the one that seems to to get the most debate that I'm seeing. Because it seems like his draft capital is going to be there, right? Most people think he's going top 15, top 10 now. And some people hate him. And some people really like him. I, I do think like, and you know, Karain has done a really good job articulating this. This is what kind of happened with the whole sam howell thing last year and sam howell ended up not even being the perfect use case because it was like both people ended up being right like pat's whole thing is it's less about like we're going to be wrong about whether the guy whether these guys are good or not like it is not even the nfl is good at evaluating quarterbacks so with that in mind what we're actually trying to do is just figure out who is going to play who is going to get starts and so then if you start viewing it through that lens you can plug your nose and even select these guys you don't like quite as much. Because if you're, if you're getting 17 games from a J.J. McCarthy in an offense, what? Like the Broncos might be another potential landing spot based on where they pick. Like going to the Broncos or Vikings, those aren't, you know, destitute landing spots. Like there are weapons, there's competent offenses there. So I, I want to be less in the business of like, this guy is good, this guy is bad. And I'm more in the business of, who is actually going to play. And I think that's probably what's interesting about the JJ stuff is like, is he getting a red shirt year? Is he not starting right away? Is he at risk of getting benched? But then like the Sam Howell, the reason that was such an interesting use case is because you did get some very valuable spike weeks from Sam Howell, but then he wasn't playing, 
you know, when it mattered the most, he did end up getting benched. So both sides of that debate ended up being, um, being correct. I guess the question then is, does JJ McCarthy have a fantasy friendly skill set? right? Is he going to run a little bit? Does he have a big arm? Because that's what buoyed Sam Howell. You know, he took a shit ton of sacks, probably not a guy you want to build a franchise around, but the way that offense was constructed and the way he played football was actually conducive to scoring fantasy points. Even a while there when he wasn't throwing a ton, he was picking up the rushing stuff. He had those multiple games with rushing TDs. It does seem like most people, and I mean, I feel like this is going to be a bit of the meta in Best Ball Mania, even when we're down to 18 draft slots, is most people wanting to go three quarterbacks. Um, I think mentally it's going to check so many boxes for people this year of perceived safety, of dialing up multiple stacks, of looking at all of the late round QB hits last year, of seeing the type of team that won Best Ball Mania. My guess is that it will probably be overutilized in Best Ball Mania, but I have a harder time saying that in these 20-round drafts. I'm just going to lock up Will Levis here at pick 190. And I actually do, I do really, in these early big board drafts where we don't know the schedule, we don't know, you know, bye weeks, we don't know who's playing in week 17, that leaning into these team level correlations, especially with 20 rounds, I think really makes sense. Um, Cause that's like one of the few variables we can control from a correlation standpoint is knowing Will Levis is going to be on the same team as Traylon Burks, Tajay Spears, DeAndre Hopkins, and Chiga Conquo. Feels like a pretty lot. I mean, we've already built out this massive bet on the Titans. I'm not even a huge Chiga Conquo guy, but he seems like a decent um, add on to this team as my tight end to as part of this big bet that the Titans are much improved. And with that, I have morphed into soccer Dave. I am now a Titans homer. Here's our team through 17 rounds. We're at a two, five, eight, two build Drake may and will Levis at quarterback. What could go wrong? Running backs, Tajay Spears, Javante Williams, Jonathan Brooks, Ty Chandler, and odd Drake estimate. Uh, wide receiver Justin Jefferson, Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, DeAndre Hopkins, Troy Franklin for the culture, Traylon Burks for the glass, Demario Douglas for reasons unbeknownst to me, tight ends Travis Kelsey and Chica Conquo. If you guys are just joining us, Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. In addition to Best Ball Breakfast Streams, I do lols here with my co-host Brian Hooper every Thursday. Brick actually just on his website put up some interesting data from last year's Best Ball Mania, Best Ball Mania 4. He looked at all of the 150 maxers and you can kind of go through, look at the various usernames, how often... They uh, deviated from ADP. I believe he even made a couple, uh, a value hound index for who was scooping the most value. There's actually a debate in the Lulz channel the other day because uh, Jack Settlement ended up showing up on the top value hounds, most ADP value, closing line value. But he had auto-drafted a bunch of his teams last year. So obviously what happens when you auto-draft is you are essentially getting the fallers in every draft. So that's naturally going to boost how much CLV you got. And then there was a debate happening as far as when that CLV occurred, when the drafts were occurring. But an interesting thing to look at. Um, I'm much more interested in ADP value that I'm manually selecting than auto-drafting. But it was funny too, I was telling the story, I had in Best Ball Mania 2, I had actually gotten a DM from Rudman saying one of my early drafts got flagged by the internal 
underdog um, system, you know, for checking for fishy stuff with drafts because it was the team that had the most ADP value in Best Ball Mania 2. And the story behind that draft, I was in Miami with Underdog as we kicked off Best Ball Mania 2. This was before even, even anyone even knew what a Chess Liam was. And they had just announced BBM 2. And I registered for one team that night, but it was late at night and I fell asleep and I didn't even draft the team. So the entire team was auto-drafted on the night the contest opened. And that team, because I wasn't IK being anything, reaching for anything, and because it was so early in the draft, so many players ended up rising that that team ended up having the most closing line value of any team in Best Ball Mania 2, which is, it's a funny story, but it's also indicative of those of you who got in early to the big board, who will get in early to Best Ball Mania drafts when it opens after the NFL draft. That is the opportunity to get the most closing line value. People were saying they were getting Trey McBride, whatever these rookies have shot up. So um, that's what I sacrificed in sitting out of early drafts. Um, but then that in this underdog landscape with so many sharp drafters, like that value dries up really quickly. So, I mean, these days it's basically what, like a day until the ADP refreshes where you can really kind of hammer some of that stuff. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. Quarterback really thinned out. Let's maybe save quarterback. Um, tight end. You know what? Screw it. If I'm going to do the Javante Williams, I'm, I'm doing the, the buying back in on these Denver players. I'm going to add Ch uh, Greg Dolchich. One of my favorite 13th round picks last year. Now an 18th round pick this year. Seems fine as a third tight end. We have the pairing with Javante Williams. And now we're going to do one more running back and a quarterback. Does anyone have any quarter or uh, running back suggestions? These are some of the names. Uh, someone, someone mentioned JK Dobbins. Was that JGFC? Which running back do we like? These are the names in, in, in order of the ranks. Miles Sanders, Izzy Abandikanda, Dylan Lobb, not doing that again. Rico Dowdle. Frank Gore, uh, Gus Edwards, doesn't seem like he's going to be back. Deuce Vaughn, J.K. Dobbins, Damian Pierce, Rodriguez, Justice Hill. People like Izzy. I, I don't have any qualms about Izzy up there. Just a true handcuff. Don't really feel like he's going to have any competition behind him. Let's do Izzy. We'll trust the ranks other than the Miles Sanders pick, which we didn't trust. And now we need to figure out who's going to be our quarterback. Because we we cannot rock a Drake May, Will Levis thing. Who is our quarterback here? I don't think... I guess if we knew who was going to be the New England quarterback, we could dial up a stack with uh, Demario Douglas. If we knew it was going to be the Denver quarterback, we could dial up a stack with Greg Dolchich. I don't think there's any other potential stacks here. Taysom Hill. I'm trying to guess. Who is it going to be? You tell me. Do we go a rookie? Do we have a Michael Penix, Bo Nix? I can't do the Kenny Pickett thing again. Sam Howell doesn't seem like he's going to be a starter. I mean, we we don't have like really any starters assurance at this point. It's, it probably just needs to be one of these rookies, Penix or Bo Nix. Who's projected to get more draft capital? Is it Penix? Mm. Yeah, that does seem like a good, considering I do have, you know, Minnesota and Denver and I guess New England. Although New England will probably have, what, Jaden Daniels? Hey, this is a family-friendly show. All right, about to land the plane on our second big board draft, the kickoff of drafting Sizen here on the Pete Overzet live stream channel. Appreciate you guys hanging out this morning.
helping me get my sea legs. I will, uh, I know how my brain works. I will after, you know, kind of shoving all of this stuff to the back burner. I'm ready to dive in. I know my guy, Jonathan, over at Fantasy Life already had a profile. I'm actually going to drop that in the link now because I have this bookmarked, have this set to read. Um, this is from a dynasty lens, Jonathan's top 10 dynasty prospects over on Fantasy Life. I'm excited to check that out. But yeah, I'm ready to dive in. Uh, I downloaded the Road of His Rookie Guide recently. I got some podcasts to catch up on. Got to catch up with all you sickos who are way ahead of me right now. I already have Levis, Bindles. I got him. I got Drake May and Will Levis. Yeah, what is, what's going to happen with Flacco? I mean, Flacco was good last year. I think I'm just taking Penix or uh, Bo Nix. So what we got? Jace Man has a four QB team. This is this is who was hoarding all the quarterbacks. Man, Jace Man, Patrick Mahomes, Tua, Aaron Rodgers, and Russell Wilson. Leave some quarterbacks for the rest of us, Jace Man. Yeah, I'm I'm very aware that the quarterback I'm selecting at pick two thirty eight is not a sure thing. <laughs> um. All right, I am going to take Michael Penix Jr. Um, here and just hope that this pl platoon, Drake May, Will Levis, and Michael Penix, oof, um, hopefully this platoon can uh, keep this team alive. Phil wants me to look at his uh, his tight ends. So the tight end or the QB hoarder also took uh, Sam Laporta. Holy cow, I got, I got to go back and look at this. Where was he? Where's the Jace man? The Jace man... Took Sam Laporta, George Kittle, TJ Hawkinson, and Darren Waller. Starved the beast, as some would say. Here's my final team. I did go a 3683. Not sure about these quarterbacks. Drake May, Will Levis, Michael Penix Jr. Running backs seem fine. Uh, pretty slim down, zero RB build. Uh, Tajay Spears, Javante Williams, Jonathan Brooks, Ty Chandler, Audric Estime, Israel Abanacanda. Wide receivers, pretty loaded. Justin Jefferson, Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, DeAndre Hopkins, Troy Franklin for the culture, Traylon Burks, Demario Douglas, and then three tight ends, Travis Kelsey, Chig Conquo, Greg Dolchich. Good tight ends, good wide receivers. Okay, running backs, pretty iffy uh, quarterbacks. Let's name this team here now that it is in the books here on 226. A little best ball breakfast. Well, three, six, eight, three guys. It felt good to be back. Felt great to, uh, to be chopping it up with you guys here, uh, today on the channel. Um, I'm trying to think of what I'll have coming up next. It will likely be, um, with the badge bros. So I'm going to keep doing off and on the clock with them on Wednesdays. We also have the swole cast is back this, uh, Wednesday, lulls Thursday, uh, ship chasing most likely on Thursday, all of that good stuff. Um, I will be sure to keep you guys posted, um, in the discord on Twitter, all of those places. And again, if you're not subscribed to my, uh, newsletter, the fantasy life newsletter, make sure you're subscribed. We're ramping up the fantasy life newsletter. Again, I write my PO box newsletter once a week on Fridays, both of them completely free. Got the links down in the show notes. Thank you again. And also to underdog for our giveaway, five big board drafts. Don't forget if you were one of those winners from the hashtag Benson giveaway, to drop your username, underdog username in the chat, in the comments, sorry, after the show. I'll get those over to underdog so you can get your credit. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on Best Ball Breakfast. I'm Peter.